Okay, let's see. And we'll hit the comma key here. I'm going to go to the tools. And we're going to grab Pixie Humanoid. I need to try something real quick. It's been bugging me all night. All right, turn on perspective. And we're going to take him. We're going to go to layers, oh, bake all, subtool, delete other. And we're going to take these polygroups here, control shift here. And let's go ahead and grab some of his arms too. And possibly some of his neck. Control shift. Hey, everybody, thanks for showing up. I'm just going to do a little. Let's go ahead and slice through here where the neck should be. And we'll take this piece too. Come on. There we go. And we'll go ahead and do a delete hidden. And we'll turn off double. So let's go ahead also and grab our select lasso. We'll hit X to go across X symmetry. And I'm going to take this here. Let's go ahead and do an auto groups. And we'll get rid of these poly groups as well. Delete hidden. Okay. Do a quick mirror and weld. Looks good. X symmetry on. Z remesher half. Depth size down to zero. All right. We've got a shirt of sorts. I'm going to go ahead and tag these ones as a delete. And preferences. Edit. Line cursor to service. All righty. So we got this going. Now, if I keep it single-sided, what I'm trying to do here is see if I can make... <clears throat> I usually use Marvelous Designer. But I'm going to try and make a collar here. Let's see, Q mesh, polygroup ball, tap control. So those are all facing the same normal, which is what I don't want. I want these to be a flip normal. So I'm going to pull this out, hold down control, tap alt, make that a new polygroup here. Go ahead and um, we could flip this one. Now we can turn double back on. So if I want to bridge these two, we could go bridge edges here to here, and those will go ahead and bridge correctly. Yeah, because it's flipping around. Um, now, ideally, what I'd like to do is bridge these two holes. So let's go to B, C, brush, curve, uh, curve, bridge. Can I do this side to this side? I mean, it's really more for like, you know what? Let's see if we go to stroke. Curve modifiers, curve snap distance down. This curve to that curve. No. Okay. Well, we can just do it this way. Fine. Bridge edges. And you can bridge every other one if you want. It's a little bit easier with uh, double turned on. And then we can just go here to close holes. Oh, I was going to close that hole too. Forgot. Okay. We'll just bridge all of these then. Bridge, 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 bridge. Here. 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 Okay. So now again, it's single sided. But what we can do is we can go in here to insert multiple edge loops, interactive elevation. I'm just going to pull this up. Kind of curve that out a little bit. And now if we want to give this thing thickness, we can go in here to maybe then extrude all polygons here. Give that shirt some thickness. And we can also go to the inside polygroup here. Hold down shift and we'll just do polygroup all. Kind of pull this in a little bit. Okay. That was a little bit easier. Anyway. Hey everybody, thanks for showing up. Um, yeah, Thanksgiving. I might have to leave a little bit early, I think. Let's see, what time does HEB open? Let's. Oh, it opens right now? Well, that's not too bad. <laughs> so my wife's going to go get some, some chicken stock. And it is like 33 degrees outside in Texas, which means... <laughs> 
Uh, it's probably the coldest it's going to get this year. Um, how do you rotate, say, spoke on a wheel using radial symmetry so you don't have to rotate them separately? Spoke on a wheel using radial symmetry so you don't have to rotate them separately. I've tried symmetry, rotate spokes in different directions. Um, I would probably, that is a thick shirt, I would probably do um, not radial symmetry, but I would do a ray mesh. So if you have a wheel, <gasps> hey, BB Griffin. There's Pepper Ann Grimp. She doesn't have her collar on. She better go put it on. Um, <laughs> if you go into like a cylinder and we say, yeah, let's just make a polymesh 3D and geometry, edge loop, delete loops. And now we've got our little cylinder here. And you know what? Let's get rid of this middle piece here. Delete hidden. And then Q mesh polygraph ball. Okay, so we've got a wheel here. And we need spokes. And you know what? We're also going to duplicate this wheel. And we'll go ahead and scale this wheel down. So we want spokes to go in between these two things. So I suppose we should also scale this out this way. And then uh, for an array mesh thing, let's go ahead and do um, let's append. A cylinder 3D and this will go ahead and be our spoke and again let's go down here to geometry delete loops and we'll go ahead and rotate this this way go ahead and scale this down and then I'm going to go down here to array mesh turn on array mesh and we're gonna rotate this where am I let's do the floor here so if I rotate this around the Y I believe Y amount 360 and then we say repeats that way you can just do an array of spokes I mean you could also do like half a spoke here I mean I would I would probably be lazy and just clip these things out but the cool thing about this is you can go ahead and thin these things out as needed because really you're only doing instances of this one spoke in the middle here and then however many you want, if you wanted to do like 12 or whatever. Old wagon wheel. And in that case, uh, I'd probably thicken this up. And, th and if I want to thicken something up, um, you can try going in here to inflate. It might do something weird with your caps. So what I tend to do is do like a group by normals. And then I'll go through here, Q mesh polygroup all. And then I'll just hold down shift and then just pull along that surface normal. Something like that. Um, cool. Um, so question unwrap with poly group sometimes says unwrapping and number goes on forever. I'm using zero mesh five for topology. Um, usually when you, when you're doing an unwrap, like for example, we got this sweet shirt. Let's see. This little Abercrombie and Fit shirt we made this morning. Um, and let's say I go over here to geometry. Let's do a quick auto groups. Uh, no, uh, group by normals. And then we'll do an uncrease all. And then we'll do a D for dynamic subdivisions. Crease poly group. And we'll do like a crease level of two or three and a smooth so of four so we've got this shirt here and um, if i go ahead and apply those now i have 514,000 polygons so even though i have polygroups on here and i can go over here to uh, i need to readjust this shit z plugin uv master and we got uh, it's a symmetrical shirt and it's got polygroups on so if we work on clone it's still going to drop down to the lowest. So if I go to unwrap, it's going to take like one second and then you can hit flatten and it's fine. And then you can just unflatten this and you can hit copy UVs and you can go back here to your original and then you could paste those UVs, which is easy. Now, if I didn't have subdivision history on this thing, if we delete lower and then go over here to work on clone and then unwrap this thing, um, it's going to take a long time because it's having to unwrap and UV a half million polygon mesh.
So if you can um, have subdivision history, Z rim mesh, project your details back, and then you can unwrap your low res, and then those those UV, UVs will transfer to your high res. Uh, is there a way to easily scale your ZBrush model when importing into Marvelous Designer as an avatar because my model keeps changing scale and this way I have to scale the clothing in ZBrush? Yeah, that's called Scale Master. Um, Joseph Drust has a, let me see, Scale. I don't do it a lot, but I know somebody who does. Well, so let's see. Well, that's Scale Master. So you can use Scale Master. Um, all right, let me think. Pixel object. I want to say it was just recently too. Uh, Okay, so if you go to pixel pixel logic download center, scroll over to the ZBrush plugin, scroll all the way down to the bottom, and go to oh scale message included. You're in, you're in luck. So just go over here to your Z uh, this thing still going. Jesus. Mm -hmm. So anyway, now you see the difference between UV unwrapping a low res or your lowest subdivision and uh, one without subdivision history. It'll do it. It'll just take a long time. Um, so best not to do it that way. So let's go ahead and just delete all on this one. And which is fair because a lot of programs would choke on a half UVing a half million polygon mesh at all. Um, but basically. Uh, so we got Scale Master. So if you're importing and exporting an avatar, uh, go over here to your Scale Master and just use this. So this way you can set whatever your um, object is to centimeters or millimeters. Uh, if you go click the Scale Master thing at the top here, it'll go to a video. And this video, yeah, will direct you to the Scale Master uh, plugin here. And he also has another... Ask ZBrush, how can I correctly size import scan data? So go through here and he talks about uh, putting a distance between two pupils, if you know that distance, and then you can use that subtool to scale your other subtools and set your scale properly in ZBrush. So scale master and scan data. Bam. Those will be your friends if you're trying to do perfect scale outside of ZBrush. Um, is it possible to snap the mesh to gizmo position, not 0001, I mean in space? I think so. So we have a W turned on. And we have our gizmo over here. And we want to hit... Uh, this is going to move the mesh to the axis. This is going to go to Unmesh Mesh Center, and this one's going to reset the orientation. Where am I in space? Let me see. Floor here. So you want to move this mesh to this gizmo location. You want to snap, insert this mesh to this gizmo location. Can we do that with... Sticky mode's not going to do it. We want to, and the, if you hold down Alt, it'll snap to this center. So I'm wondering... Snap an object to a pivot location. Hmm. Let me think. What would I normally do in this situation? I would normally have... Um, I would have an object here. It's like, okay, I want to snap this object to the center of this object here. So you would go, there's the unmesh mesh center. I wonder if we go, okay, unmesh mesh center. 
and then go to Unmesh Mesh Center, and then say go to Hmm. Hmm. I'll think about that one a little bit harder. I'm not sure. Um, ever gotten really ugly seams on UV Master Unwrap and exporting out as an OBJ? Um, the seams are kind of yours to control, I think. So if we go over here to UV Master and we say check seams on this one, um, we do have a seam right along the front. So in this case, what I would do, let's go ahead and delete that one here. Is let's go ahead and work on clone again. Actually, let's go ahead and delete that one because I don't need that. Work on clone. And now, when we do uh, check seams on this clone, we have a seam right down the middle, so we'd have to tell ZBrush. Uh, probably the easiest way I would do this is isolate this one, and then I'm just going to tell it exactly where I want my seams just by using polygroups. That's just a easiest way for me to control ZBrush. You can also use control painting, which we make it into, but I'm going to hit control W on this one. Give it a new polygroup. So now with uh, symmetry and polygroups on, we can say unwrap and flatten. Looks good. And also, if you're not using these inside green polygroups for any sort of texture resolution, uh, when you go to flatten here, just take, hit W to go into transpose mode, Hold, uh, go out of X symmetry, tap X, and you can shrink this one down, and then you can invert that, and um, let's say we want to scale these up, and if you're going outside the 0 to 1 space, I wouldn't worry too much about it, because ZBrush will automatically, um, if we go to unflatten, and then flatten again, it'll go ahead and arrange it to the 0 to 1 space, so you can go through here and you can just move this stuff around. So, um, I believe also, if you hit Y to go out of transpose mode, so instead of holding down control and tapping to mask these things, you should be able to, unless I'm mistaken, brush, auto masking, mask by polygroups up to 100, and now whatever you click on first will be what it grabs. Um, you can also go in here with your move brush and make your move brush one, uh, one pixel, and now you can just use your move brush to move around these shells as needed. So, a couple different ways for you to uh, do that. But again, ZBrush will always fit your UVs in a 0 to 1 no matter what. So, it, that could be a good thing or a bad thing depending on how much control you want. Let's move this shell over. So, uh, again, unflatten, flatten. So now we're in the uh, 0 to 1, and this one's a lot smaller, so now we got the front and the back taking up just the space that we want. And then, um, looks good, copy UVs, paste UVs, and now if we did something like go over here to, uh, what are we looking at here, surface, uh, noise, and noise plug, and weave, and turn off mixed basic noise, and plug-in scale, and strength, and not 3D so we don't get stretching on the side, we go to UV, and now we're going to use our UVs here, we can hit OK, and let's go back to Matt Cap here, and also let's hit D for a dynamic preview, and now also let's go to crease polygroup here. So now our seams are kind of hidden on the side. So you can do enable control painting to control where your seams go. Uh, you can protract, you can protect and attract. Um, you can try using attract from ambient occlusion, which will bake an ambient occlusion map and put the attract colors uh, into that. I have mixed results, but usually polygroups is my best bet. Um, is scale mask used for 3D printing as well, or is that done in one's printer? I think you could do both, but I think the reason they did scale master was for uh, 3D printing stuff. There's also a 3D print hub here where you can do like can go between millimeters and inch, and there's also some side options, size options in here. Um, store size settings, export options, 
and then uh, that mixed with scale master here is probably you could probably be pretty damn accurate I know ZBrush isn't the greatest program for accuracy if I'm ever doing anything where I need to be um, manufacturingly specifically accurate I'd use something like uh, CAD program Um, question, do you know how to project eyes topology? Do you split the face to project overlapping areas? Um, eyes topology. So like, um, the creases around your eyes and stuff. I want to say, um, usually when I'm doing a face, I'm starting with a base mesh and all of those folds will be built in and, and as I, uh, snap those pieces. I just do a little bit of cleanup in there and probably I would mask. I'm trying to remember because there is some scan data where you have your scan head. Ooh, do I have scan head? I have it on my laptop. Um, you have your scan head and then you have your base mesh and then you snap to that base mesh data. But there's some areas like around the lips and the eyes where it's easier to just manually move that stuff into place as opposed to snapping. So you'd mask that out, project all, and then you would go through and move like the big overhanging. Um, undercuts for the creases in the eye and stuff. I'm trying to think if I even have a version of something like that that would be worthwhile to look at here. Geometry here. Whoop. So he doesn't really, but what would probably happen on this one, let's go ahead and go to Metcap Subtool. I'll turn off transparency and go into solo mode here and uh, he has this I forgot we baked a texture as an example so here's this texture map here we baked a uh, texture off so for example he would probably have uh, let's go ahead and hit W hold down control and tap that one and that's, let's go back to Y there we go so we're going to uh, just mask this one out and then control tap to invert that and then I know go into remove brush and, you know this stuff would be like overlapping my eyes and stuff and then we hit D just as I'm modeling this would be something that I probably wouldn't snap to scan data if that was my base mesh model head and then I would just manually move this around. So if we snap the rest of the head, and then I would just go in here manually, and let's turn off mass by polygroups down to zero. And then you could just go through here and make whatever changes you would need. Same thing for the lips. Lips can get a little bit iffy. I'm trying to think if there's any other problem areas. Ears usually aren't too bad. Um, but there's a program called RAPX or RAP3. Do I have that installed? No. I need to make a note of that. I think I brought this up before and I totally forgot. Install wrap three. I uh, use that program to um, do your pinpoints here and then that would just wrap that. It actually does a really good job. So this kind of stuff you could mark as uh, leave me alone and then it would wrap to your scan data head and stuff like that and project. I think that's what I would do. It's been a while. Um, uh, Wozner asks, Mike, question about health. You work a lot in front of a monitor. What's your schedule to save your eyes energy? Working more than eight hours with PC makes eyes suffer. What's the secret? Vitamins. Um, so, and that was part of the question was vitamins. Hmm. I have, we were talking about the office, uh, some stuff here. If there's, um, this isn't really, not appetizer, app cherry tomato app for the uh, for Google Chrome so this is more of a productivity manager and uh, this was sent out at work a couple days ago so you can add this to Chrome and it'll make sure that it'll put a little timer in there and every 25 minutes it'll tell you to take a break for five minutes and then uh, on the fourth or fifth rotation it'll tell you to take a 20 minute break um, and that's just more to kind of keep you focused but it's also a good way to kind of just you know get your eyes away from your monitor, go take a lap, that kind of thing. Um, one thing that's helped me 
personally is not using a Cintiq just because when I when I model like right now I can lean my head way back and I can just kind of model generally um, and I can get a little more ergonomic my arms are down at my sides and they're you know at the right height I don't have my arm up for eight ten hours a day and also I tend to like lean over and into a Cintiq when I'm working so moving to a tablet helped me uh, a lot just to kind of get my eyes away from monitor because yeah your Cintiq is just a huge light bulb right in front of your eyeball so if you tend to lean over it like I do or get in too close for too long, your back's going to start hurting, your arm's going to start hurting, and your eyeball's going to start hurting. Um, I'm trying to think what else could help. I think just, you know, getting away from your monitor on a consistent schedule and making sure you don't go eight hours straight in front of a monitor and then take an hour break and then go eight hours straight in front of a monitor right after that and then take an hour break. You know, it's maybe taking consistent breaks and also maybe not um, working so much. I know that's not an option for everybody, but uh, I have a question. I want to make medieval armor. How would you approach making it, blocking it in a ZBrush or poly modeling software? Um, well, ZBrush is poly modeling software so I would probably start there um, that's just I, I if I'm gonna go into another program it better be a, a damn good reason I'm going into another program because I'm lazy as F so if we go over here and we want to make uh, medieval armor for him we'll go to uh, delete other and then of course I need to make a macro for this or I just need to make save out of, okay you know what I'm gonna do let's do uh, layers bake all we've deleted other I'm going to go to save this tool as, and we're going to go to our ZBrush 4R8 Z tools, and we have the Nick Z male human average. We're going to call this the Nick Z um, um, plane base. So now when I hit the comma key, I can just go over here and grab the, uh, it should be under tool. Where is he at? Let's see. Let's go brush tool areas. Um, oh, I, I lied. Nick Z, super average male. Nick Z, humanoid male. Uh, C program files looks like just right. Z tools. Nick Z, human average male. Let's see. Save as. C program files, pixel logic, ZBrush 8 Z tools. This is a Z tool. And it should show up here, unless I'm crazy. Am I going crazy? I've saved stuff in here before. Why is he not? Oh, there he is. Take him, take him a second for some reason. Uh, Nick Z, plain base Z tool. So now I can just load that up whenever I need to do um, example stuff. So if I want to, I can duplicate this guy off. And depending on what type of armor you want to make, uh, there's a million different ways to do this. You can go BTO, and it's like, okay, I want to poly model something. All right, well, you can poly model this. And now we're poly modeling, like so. And then we can go through here, and then here to here. And then, you know, let's put a little more resolution in here. And now we can tap off, and now we can go split mass points. And now we can go mirror, mirror and weld, hit X go across X symmetry, and now we've got a pair of Q mesh polygroup all these things. We can put a little ridge around it. Q mesh polygroup all, you can pull this out and pull this out. And now you can just use Z modeler to do whatever sort of modeling you want to do. And then you can go through here and you can move the stuff around. You can go in here and you can crease, uh, do a crease tolerance, crease polygroup, hit dynamic. Um, you can do crease level. So we'll do like a crease level of two, smooth sub of three. And you can go through here and you hit shift D and D to kind of make these look however you want. And then you can go back through here and still continue to poly model pieces off here if you want to do like take these pieces here and then hold down control as you want to pop these things off here. And now you've got a separate piece of armor. Let's go ahead and do control shift A, split hidden. And then we'll do another crease poly group. Hit D on this one, D on this one. And now we'll go to Unmatched Mess Center and we can do all sorts of goofy stuff with this. So again, this is just basic box modeling, poly modeling. 
Um, if you wanted to do uh, something a little bit more intricate, what I might do is probably, let's say we divide this up and then immediately just go into Dynamesh, go X across X symmetry. And let's say we wanted to do uh, maybe a chest plate or something. You could sculpt in the chest plate first if you wanted to, just to kind of see what it's going to look like. If you want to see what it's going to look like underneath your guy, let's go ahead and hit D for dynamic subdivisions on here. Uh, let's go ahead and do an inflate of negative one. And then we can go through here with like our clay buildup. Let's drop that intensity down. And you can kind of see where we want that chest plate to go and go into clay brush here. And so instead of sitting here trying to poly model a perfect chest plate, you could go through here and you could just model in what you think the chest plate's going to end up looking like. And you could also, you know, project the muscle detail and extract it if you wanted to start there. Um, so if you wanted to, it's like, okay, let's go in here and let's say, uh, let's go control D a couple times and we'll go into our Damien standard brush, turn on X and go like, okay, uh, this guy's base mesh. He was a little, not that he was a little soft or anything, but uh, if we're going to do like some superhero stuff, we can go ahead and say, go in with our clay brush and kind of pump up the jam a little bit here. So let's say now that's his new body. See how easy it is? Just got to hit the gym for 10 seconds and in C brush anyways. So we've got this here. And we want to go ahead and make a chest plate out of this. Well, you can start with just masking where you want this to go. Let's go ahead and hold down control, go to mask lasso, and go romp, and then romp. And this is going to be the starting point of our chest plate here. We can go here. And we can try and do like an extract. Now I'll go ahead and extract your muscles onto that chest plate as well. Um, trying to think what else we could. I mean, there's a million different ways. And, and that, this extraction too might be a little bit. Let's go ahead and add a little here and then take a little bit away here. Um, what I would probably prefer to do is duplicate this off. Hit Control W. Um, just isolate that. Hit Delete Hidden. Uh, let's see. Go to Geometry. Delete lower, delete hidden. Go ahead and polish my uh, borders here. And now we can just Z remesh this to get something nicer. You can just Q mesh this or extract this again because um, you can extract things from uh, visibility. But what we're going to do instead, real quick, just to get something nicer to work with, is do uh, again Z remesh, depth size down to zero, half, half. Let's get some lower res to work with. There we go. So again, we're back in poly modeling mode. Only I didn't have to sit there and poly model this damn thing. All I had to do is use zero mesh to the heavy lifting for me. Um, if we wanted to, we can go ahead and add some thickness to this. If I want to project his muscles back on there, I can go to Q mesh poly group all. We can just pull this in. Make sure you turn off double and flip that around under your display properties. And now we can go in here. Let's do a crease poly group. And then, um, so you see if we hit D, that's the creasing we're going to get, but we need to project those muscles back. So I'm going to hit uh, control shift, isolate this top part here. And we're going to do, uh, as long as we have both these showing, I can do a project all and then control D, isolate this top part, project all, control D, isolate this top part, project all, control D, isolate this top part, project all. So we got his muscles back on here and we have subdivision history on here. Um, that could be some problems if we, um, and then of course we're going to want to make this scaled out and you can go through here and use your move brush here. Now, if we wanted to add, do any more poly, poly modeling to this, it could be problematic. And really I probably, I wouldn't need his muscles on there. I could just re-sculpt some armor muscles on there uh, to avoid having to do something like this, where I go down to subdivision level four and I go to free subdivision levels, go into solo mode, and then go through here and do like poly group, poly loop. Oops. Let's do that again. Okay. We'll do that on the sides here. And then we can go to Q mesh poly group all. We could pull all this up. 
So we wanted to put a ridge in there, right? Then you can go out of free subdivision levels, and then any changes that you've made uh, would hopefully be transferred, but you can see it kind of did something weird here. So what I would probably do is just have my base shape here, because this is fine. I can go back and sculpt the muscles. If I wanted to, I could, I guess, see project the muscles back. Um, but more likely what I would do is I just go through here. Let me go out of solo mode. Yeah, so let's do this. We'll go back in here. We'll do Q-Mesh Polygroup all on, on all sides. We'll just go ahead and pull this up and give a lip all the way down around the bottom. And then we'll go back in here to like crease polygroup and then hit D for our dynamic subdivisions. And then you're free to just poly model this thing to your heart's content. If we want to, we can just pull this out, hold down shift. Um, or let's go through here. We'll go to insert single edge loop, hold down alt. And I'll just pull this stuff around here. There we go. We got our chest plate in here. Um, if we want to ensure that these are all different poly groups, we could go to polygroup poly loop and just tap alt. And I'm going to make sure these are all the same. So while I'm manipulating this one poly group here, Q mesh poly group ball, we can just hold down shift and just thicken these all up at the same time. If you wanted to do just one, you could do polygroup island. Now you're just doing your island here. And if you didn't want to just pull along the surface normal, just hold down shift, and now you can do even more radical stuff. Radical dude. Totally tubular. And then we'll go D. And then again, if it's too crispy on here, you go to your crease tolerance here, and we'll say uh, crease level of 2, and then smooth subdiv of 3. And then I kind of back out, back off those edges a little bit, and then just go through here and do any sort of stuff you wanted to do. Obviously, uh, if you wanted to, I mean, it would, at this point, it'd be fairly easy, and I'd probably, before you start doing all the detail stuff, start breaking the armor up into how it should look and if you want to you could even start with just this top shell delete hidden and now you can go through here and you can do like let's do insert single edge loop here delete higher and delete hidden and then we go through here we can bevel this edge loop complete and now we can do a delete polygroup all and along the sides too, you're probably not going to have this all closed in. In this one, I'm going to get a bigger gap through here. So I'm just going to bevel this whole thing here and then we'll delete that. So now I've got these two shapes here. If I want to, we can do an auto groups, do front and back. Uh, we can split these off into separate subtools if we want, split hidden. Um, or we can keep them together if we're just going to be making this, uh, giving this some thickness. <clears throat> Although, I mean, it's not terribly hard to go ahead because you can Q-mesh one side and then just tap and Q-mesh the other side or extrude at the same properties. Uh, but now that you have this, it's like, okay, I want to make some straps. That's easy enough. It's just BTO. Ramp, ramp, jump, 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 jump. Bow. Split mass points. And now you've got a strap here. It's like, well, I wanted rounded straps. You can just hit D. And um, if we go to the side here, let's go ahead. We'll keep this strap active. So when you go over here to BTO, you can go through here. It's like we'll do some longer straps on this side. Let's make my brush size bigger here. Get it to behave a little bit more um, accurately. And then we'll go ahead and uh, do we want to split these mass points? We want to leave them in the same subtool. I'll leave them in the same subtool. Um, if you didn't want them so rounded, it's just a little bit of box modeling here. And you could also, if you wanted to make them, we'll do insert multiple edge loops. We can go to solo mode here and we could make the, oh, these are a little bit thick. Let's hit, um, I think we should be able to Q-Mesh, Polygroup Ball. For some reason, didn't give me great polygroups on this. Let's go ahead and, well, that's no big deal, group by normals. And then we'll do a quick mirror and weld across the X-axis. And now we can Q-Mesh, Polygroup Ball, hold down Shift. We can thin those out. Um, but now that we put a midline down here, we can go in here and we could say maybe bridge Connected uh, connected polys as a circle, specified curvature 100, 8, line to normal, triangle sides, and go ahead and, do I still have interactive? Specified resolution, there we go. Other way, did I delete that edge? There we go. So you could round these out um, as much or as little as you actually wanted to. And then we'll go back in here, we'll do another group by normals. And now you could do, again, Q-Mesh, polygroup all. 
Uh, you could thin these things out. You could add a little border here, and if you wanted to just do one side, Q mesh polygroup island. Pop this out, and now you've got straps here. Let's go ahead and increase polygroup, increase level of two, smooth subdiv of three. And you got straps you can put on here. Uh, going back to this armor, we could try doing, I'm going to extrude in because we're already on the outside here. So we're going to go to Q mask, extrude, polygroup all, and we'll just pull this in for our thickness. And then we need to um, we'll go ahead and just tap this one, do the same, and then we'll go ahead and flip our normals here. So we're kind of back where we started, etc., etc. Um, question, please tell me how to make jean seam stitches like around the back pockets. That would just be, uh, we've done this before. For example, if we go over here to plain 3D, make poly mesh 3D, and we go to geometry trial smooth, divide, divide, divide. Actually, you know what? Let's not divide, divide, divide yet. Let's make this a little bit more seamy. And uh, we can go here to zero measure half, just zero mesh this plane here. Um, and now we can hit smooth so div off, divide, divide. And then you can go through here and we're going to make st uh, stitches I prefer to do in the texture, it's just a little less destructive. Um, even the seam rolling I would probably do in Painter and not in ZBrush. Again, just the destructive nature of anything that's not breaking your um, your silhouette. Uh, but in a pinch, if you wanted to, we could switch this over to MRGBZ Grabber, and we'll just grab this height information here. And there we go. Uh, we'll go ahead and turn that texture off. And now if we go over here to a sphere, control N, edit, make poly mesh 3D, divide, divide, divide. We now have a standard brush. I'm going to go ahead and steal one of our brushes in here called, not weave, but stitch. And this stitch basically has a roll function turned on under stroke. You're going to see uh, modifiers up here. You have roll turned on. So if we swap this stitch alpha out with our alpha, we can now uh, go through here. Let's go ahead and change that focal shift down to negative 100. So now we can use this brush to kind of put in jean seams. Uh, oh, you know what I should have done on this thing? We should take our standard brush here. And if you if you like this, hold down shift and snap it. Uh, one thing I would do is go to stroke lazy mouse, change that. Uh, lazy radius is already set to one, so it should snap all the way down to where my brush is, which it does. Um, but you can also hit L to toggle that off. As long as you have 4R8P2 installed, you can use the old functionality of just holding down shift and just dragging your brush, which I think is what I prefer. So now we've got a seam on one side. So now let's go ahead and do MRGBZ Grabber again. And then turn the texture off. And now we'll go back to our, oops, sphere, edit mode. Um, we've got our stitch and we'll load in that second alpha. So now we have um, that kind of cut line on the other side. Um, obviously, you probably want to spend a little bit more time on this than I did, all 10 seconds of it. You can go here, you can rotate this, or you can flip it vertically, or what I should have done, flip it horizontally. There we go. So now the seam's on this side. You can change your Z intensity here if you want to. And now you've got a, a pants seam that you can use to do your stitches that way. And of course, if you wanted to, you could just add um, stitches into the alpha. Although again, I would do that non-destructively or less destructively in a texture program. Uh, how would you go about making a connection for a 3D print? Would you just mask and extrude on the end using Boolean and the other? I haven't figured it out yet. Um, there's some really good um, 3D print stuff out there. Probably not the most qualified for this, but what you can do, I need to get a 3D printer just so I can uh, converse effectively. But let's say we have this guy here. Um, probably what I would do is a Boolean type operation where we go in here 
and let's just take this thing here and I'm just going to grab this one we're going to go ahead and split mass points so I'm looking at him and him and this one let's do shift D and this will be our let's go ahead and tap alt and we'll go across local symmetry here there we go so if you wanted to like slice through where you would want to cut through an object you could use this like you said live boolean like so and um, you could also set up uh, sub tools with all these key registration and joint things already set up um, Joseph Dress has a really good one for like knees where you can just pass those into your knees and it would, your knees will automatically rotate around a pin joint um, this is the a lazy man's poor man's version of this but anyway if we take this to the subtractive we turn on live boolean now we're getting a preview of that live boolean so now you can go through here and you could do whatever you wanted uh, if we turn on transparency we can go through here and we could say uh, give me another cube and let's turn on transparency ghost so we can go ahead and put a cube registration in here we can do this on both sides um, so now what we need to do is we'll go ahead and split those mass points here so we have this is another subtractive mesh here and we're going to go ahead and duplicate this cube so when we do this operation we're going to have this one is going to split the object and then we're going to have one cube which is also going to split this one here um, I guess we could we could try clipping that back but I'd really just rather not to so you know what I'm going to do I'm going to do two operations and again there's probably a more elegant way to do this but just off the top of my head we're going to cut with this plane we're going to cut with this cube too but only this top part here so i'm going to go ahead and turn everything off except for these so first thing we're going to do is go ahead and do a uh, boolean dynamic subdivisions do we if we have that turned on i don't remember if we do or not but we'll go ahead and make a boolean mesh with that turned on so now we have a u mesh uh, we should have a U mesh. Is my ZBrush acting weird? Where's my, all my U mesh is at? Oh, there it is. Hmm. Uh, so now we have uh, a U mesh here that we can go ahead and go insert our U mesh. And now. Uh, if we want to do the key registration, let's go ahead and do a quick um, auto groups. I'm going to take this piece here and we're going to go ahead and split hidden. So now we've got the torso here. So we can take this torso mesh and we can subtract. If we move this up and we go into Alt R, you can see we're going to subtract that key registration out of this side. And then for the arms here, we'll make another start group and we're going to add. Let's go ahead and look at just these ones. We're going to add the cubes to this one. So if we have both of these turned on and we go down here to our Boolean uh, dynamic subdivision, I don't think we have on, so we'll just go ahead and make Boolean mesh. So we've got, since we've got two start groups, if we go to this U mesh, now we're going to have a U mesh with that cut out. And then we're going to have this one with this added. So now if we move this one out, you're going to see this one should plug right into here. Now there is going to be tolerances. Uh, you are going to have to kind of worry about you know so and again you could probably oh you know what we could have done even with the tolerances in there um, you could you could make that cut plane and then you could do a boolean where you boolean additive one side and you boolean subtractive the other side and then whenever you move that plane around no matter what you're going to have the alternating key registration on both sides so you don't have to do that compound operation uh, basically what i'm trying to say is you could make something like um let's go back to that plane 3d and if you ever you can go and initialize you can also just go down here to geometry reconstruct reconstruct that down a little bit and then we'll go here and you could say Q mesh. Actually, let's do inset a single poly region. And then Q mesh poly group all, hold down shift. And now if you do Q mesh poly group all or all polygons. Oops. Let's go back the other way. 
and let's go ahead and delete. Let's do insert single edge loop here and here. It's kind of curving in a little bit. So now if we go to flip, uh, I guess that is right. Okay, so we've got this here. We can go to brush, create insert mesh new. And then let's go back to our guy here. And then if we go in here with our new insert mesh brush, we'll go across the X axis. And then we'll go ahead and split mass points. And then as we rotate this around and we don't want to cross over the midline here make these things smaller or round there we go and again this is something I don't really think about that much just off the top of my head um, so probably again not the most elegant solution in the world but um, now that you have this we could, uh, let's turn off all these start groups here. We got this one here, and this one here, and then this one subtractive, live boolean. So now if we do make boolean mesh, we could do control shift, control shift A, and uh, now you've got one side that's cut out and then one side that has the thing that fits right in there and you also have the built-in tolerance so it kind of has a little bit of space around it to kind of get you in there quicker. Something like that. Um, how do you make perfect round lines when using curve brush when I try to make cables it gets all destroyed? Um, I would always set up something like this. So it would be like make a polymesh 3D and it's like where do I want this to go on my object and I would just do like a coat a coating around my object or I would say take this guy here and be like I want a perfectly round cable so I'm gonna slice through him and then I can go to brush curve um, tube and then hold down shift and just snap it around um, let's go ahead and make that smaller like that or in this case you got something a little bit more complex and now I'm just gonna go through here with slice circle uh, if we want to make it a perfect circle, let's go here to square center. And now when you hold down shift, it'll snap to that polygroup there. And then do the split mass points. There you go. Uh, oh boy, I'm kind of behind here. Sorry if I get uh, backed up. I'm kind of going through quick. Um... Is it possible to make a hockey or brush that does just a Z modeler function in IE Q mesh? Yeah, you'll just have to save out. Um, if you go into your Z modeler brush and um, Q mesh, let me think. So if you wanted to set a different Z modeler brush with different stuff set up, you can just save out. You can go to your Z modeler brush set up your settings however you want. Save that as a new Z modeler brush in your ZBrush for R8 uh, Z startup brush presets and then you can call it you know Z modeler one two three or whatever you want and then whenever you start up ZBrush you'll have a new Z modeler new Z modeler brushes down here with different settings and then you assign hotkeys to those. <laughs> yeah, I would definitely. Yeah, so if we wanted to put uh, armor on this naked guy, I would. I would, you know. And that's a good. That's actually a good point. Uh, if we go back to one thing, I always try to think about when I am. I just got caught up in making just plain old armor. But if you're making plain old armor, let's go ahead and turn everything else back on. Um, you're gonna want to give some uh, cloth under here. You don't want iron sitting right on skin. It's gonna go a little chafy. Um, thanks for all the kind words everybody thanks for showing up um, I'm going to go downstairs and help my wife in a little bit so let's last couple questions here if there's any more uh, is Joseph Need thing available to buy or download I, I'm sure he has it available for download um, let me see 
I'm just taking a stab in the dark here. Let me see if I can find where that is. Fan art, fan art, uh, 3D printed, official legacy plugins. Hmm. I'm not positive where that is, but um, this is a real live live stream right now, but uh, it is going to be on YouTube in a bit, and I'm streaming Twitch and YouTube at the same time using Restream. Um, oh, Sam, uh, earlier this morning, check this out. So I had, um, <laughs> I had an epiphany, not really an epiphany, but it was more of a, you know what, that was a real pain in the butt doing the thickness and then doing the collar. So what we did this morning, um, if you didn't catch it, just wait for the YouTube video to pop up. And you can go to the very beginning, the first thing I did this morning, which is uh, going through here and doing the single-sided mesh and then making the collar. It was so much easier. And then we went through it and we UV'd it and all that good stuff. So check that out. Um, got a question from a random guy. I always have friends make fun of me using this guy base mesh to sculpt on and we're just making characters for fun. Um, <laughs> is that a question? It sounds like more like a statement. Uh, you know what? For as long as they're your friends, uh, some gentle ribbing is A-OK, -okay. um, as long as they're they're being nice about it. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't concern yourself too much with using the old Nick Z base mesh. It's a good base mesh. Uh, is it possible to download your hotkeys? Yeah, go to, you can go to my Cube Brush or Gumroad page. And if you scroll down to the very bottom, here's a link. You scroll down to the very bottom here, you're going to see... Intro to ZBrush files. It's free. Don't worry about it. And you can go here. And this one has uh, the Z start. It has my custom menu and my hotkeys if you want it. And you can get you can get up and roll. And if you did want to follow along, you could just have this menu. Um, it might not be this exact menu. I change things around a little bit. But what I would say you probably should do in, instead of doing that is go over here to my YouTube channel playlist and go to the intro to ZBrush part two and that'll walk you through what's going on with my internets. Give me my... There we go. Intro to ZBrush part two and this will walk you through custom hotkeys, custom interface, custom menus, first three videos and just knock yourself out. It's actually pretty easy and then that way it's more custom to what how you want to work and not necessarily me. <laughs> yeah, it's at the very beginning. I was going to record it again for you just because it's a pretty simple process. So instead of 15 minutes of me failing, it'll be like two minutes of me going, oh, it's so easy to make a collar. Um, but yeah, you can just go back here too. I'll probably go delete that link I sent you. Um, can you explain what AccuCurve is? Yeah, so that would be underneath the move brush here. We got Curve, AccuCurve turned on. So if you, I mean, this probably has more functionality for other brushes, but for what I use it for, is if the AccuCurve is turned off for your move brush, yeah, let's hit X. The move brush kind of does like a nice gentle fall off. Uh, if you wanted to kind of pull out to a, uh, get rid of this thing. If you wanted to pull out to a corner, you can use AccuCurve to kind of pull out. Now uh, this kind of makes it look like it pulls out to a spike, but what I usually use it for is something like if we have, let's go ahead and go to mask pin here. And we can go over here to Subtool, Extract, Accept. And let's say this thing is just like a Dynamesh. So we got kind of a, we're just done kind of doing some Dynamesh sculpting. And I'm like, you know what? I wish this thing pulled out to a harder corner. Uh, maybe not on this side, but on this side. Um, you can go through here with AccuCurve and you could pull these things out to corners here. Let's see if I can get a, there we go. So you can pull these things out to corners as opposed to uh, pulling them out to, if we use just the move brush with AccuCurve off, it'll pull out to just a rounded thing. Just turn AccuCurve on and now you can pull out to a corner on both sides. Um, of course, since we extracted this, we do have polygroups in here. So what we could do instead is isolate this polygroup, go through here with slice. Let's turn off X here. Uh, here's a fancy trick. If you have a slice activated, just tap control. That'll get you into this mode temporarily. And now I can just do a delete hidden. So if you go through here 
and let's go ahead and turn on double temporarily. We're going to go through slice, and we're going to slice like this away, and also like this away. And now that we have these polygroups kind of set up, uh, those are some ugly polygroups. Let's try that again. Let's go here, and here, and here, and there. So now that we have all those set up, those are basically features. So now we can go into our Deformation Polish by Features menu. We'll do Open Circle, and we'll just polish this down. So now we'll get nice uh, hard surface corners here. Of course, if you wanted to work on just a lower res mesh, it'd be simple enough. Um, you could go ahead and do like keep groups, target polygon count of half, and then that way Zero Mesher will build in, let's turn it down to size down to zero. Zero Mesher will build in uh, lines along those things, but what I usually end up doing is just deleting all that stuff, and now I can just Zero Mesh this. One piece here, uh, let's do, turn keep groups off. There we go, it had a smoothing on there I didn't like. Okay, so now we've got this piece here. Let's go ahead and turn double off. And now we can go through here and like Q mesh polygroup all. And we can go ahead and flip. And now we have this thing available to us to do all sorts of box model y stuff you wanted to do. D, crease polygroup, crease level three, smooth that to four. Something like that. Um, Salty says, how do I get Instalod? Um, that's a good question. I would assume somewhere on their website. Um, I've been doing a lot of deep dives into Houdini. Kind of getting the same functionality. Um, Houdini has been a blast. I love doing it. I just need to get better at it before I do my um, intro Houdini stuff. What's the best UV software to make a good Unwrap for game production? Zebras gives some raw result. Head SUV layout too, or something else. Um, I mean, I do use, um, I do have Hedis. Um, off the top, I mean, Maya stuff's pretty good. Any 3D package has pretty decent UV tools nowadays. Um, I prefer just not to do my UVs at all, so that's why I use Instalot or Houdini to kind of do the heavy lifting for me. Uh, MRGBZ Grabber, I created a bolt head model and want to get an alpha. Regardless of the frame size alpha, only the bolt head with a base, without a base is recorded. When in, when in doubt, uh, let's see, we'll hit W, go to brush, insert. We'll go ahead and grab industrial parts here. And uh, there's a bolt head in here. Um, there's also, I mean, we can just do this one. So yeah, hit W. Uh, let's say we got a bolt head here. So if we want to capture this one, um, you can go out of edit mode temporarily. And so it doesn't yell at you. Then we got MRGBZ Grabber. And if you hold down Shift, it'll constrain itself to a square. Um, it should give you a depth grab of this, um, of just whatever you're looking at in that case. Um, if you wanted to do anything more specific, MRGBZ Grabber is just kind of like a nice quick way to do stuff. And you can also do MRGBZ Grabber of your entire document if you just pull and it'll get your whole document. Um, if I'm doing anything specific, what I'll probably prefer to do is uh, go into your document settings and change, change that to like 512 by 512 or if you want higher res, 1024 by 1024. Hit enter, hit resize. And now you're gonna wanna go into your document menu here so you can see the whole thing. And also let's go back here to the background and change that so we can see it better. Uh, we're gonna go to zoom, to zoom our document out so we can see the whole bounding size. And now we can take this one here and let's also zoom out a little bit more. There we go. So now if we wanted to capture this alpha like this, all you gotta do is go to alpha, grab doc, and now you have a 1024 by 1024 with the alpha positioned on here, like so. Now, having said all that, what I would prefer to do, let's go to um, alpha, grab doc. So now if I wanted to like, say, put these on a sphere, I could go to um, like my standard brush. We can clone that off. We can go here to drag dot. Now you're gonna, what you're gonna have to do now though is swap these alphas out. This is a royal pain. You know, so it's like, okay, I got this, but now I have to go in here to the alpha menu and do this. And you know, I have to load up a bunch of alphas every time I wanna do something like this. So what I would say is instead of doing that, 
go here and uh, make us, let's go ahead and delete this. So we've got this here. Let's go ahead and duplicate this and we'll go ahead and rotate this around. And um, we'll go ahead and duplicate this and we'll also grab um, another thing you can do. Let's just do this. This will be easier. Let's go to Z plugin. Now we're going to go to B, uh, I, industrial parts here. And there's a plugin you can download called the IMM extractor. Um, so just hit that. That'll extract all those insert mesh brushes to an IMM brush. So now that you have all of these uh, brushes here extracted, what you can then do is hit B, create multi-alpha brush, which for some reason it was having a hard time. Switch to the chisel brush and then hit B, create multi-alpha brush. There we go. So now we have all of those bolt pieces in one brush here. So now if I go back down to um, my poly mesh sphere and we say, okay, I've got this alpha here, so I can use this one. We'll go ahead and do Z intensity. But no, I want to change this one. Oh, but well, I want to change this one. Or because it's a, uh, a multi basically an insert mesh brush now with alphas, what you can do is go to your brush menu and your stroke menu and use all of these things uh, to your advantage. So if you wanted to say, go to your brush uh, 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 modifiers. We'll step through. So now it'll just step through your alphas as you go, uh, as well as you can turn on lazy mouse and you can change it to uh, dot stroke and you can just pull these things out. And then because it is a lazy mouse here, you can change the lazy step. So it spaces them out a little bit more. Oh, it's still stepping through. Let's turn that off. I want to stick with one, please. This one. There we go. So we can kind of uh, step those out. Uh, you can change the Z intensity to make them go out further or the Z intensity here. Or you can hold down Alt. You can go in and you can go thick to thin. And you can also go to this new thing here I try to bring up, which is alpha and texture. There's a magnify now, so you can crank that up and you get, when you go thick to thin, it'll actually like, so there's this magnify on and then with magnify off and you go thick to thin, it looks like that. So you can actually have it inflate as you go thick to thin. Uh, alpha is created size of the frame, not size of the model. I just can understand why I get a different alpha. Uh, for MRGBZ, I'm not sure. Um, but again, if you wanted to really control where that alpha goes, I would just use alpha grab doc, and now your alpha will be exactly where this thing is. Um, in fact, what you could do also, let me go out of edit mode, hit W, and then hold down, we can do shift S, save a screenshot, and now you can do variations of this one here. So now that those are, um, let's go back in the draw mode. Now that those are on your uh, canvas here, when you go to alpha grab doc, it'll grab all three. I mean, you can also just grab, you know, multiple versions of this, or you can drag it out of your canvas here, stay in edit mode, and then do shift S and you could just do stuff like that. But that just gives you a little bit more control over where your alphas go. Uh, it's a bit expensive for a plugin. Is there some kind of free license? Not to my knowledge. I uh, I just got it because I because I'm awesome. Let's just admit it, shall we? No, I really don't know why, but I get to play with toys. Yeah, Houdini intro is coming up soon. Um, I got a ton of notes. I'm having a blast. I, I did a deep dive into Houdini like years ago and then never followed up with it. So I'm relearning Houdini 16.5 and uh, we're going to have a lot of fun with Houdini coming up. Uh, have problems with the curve model and tripart not welding? Yes. Um, yeah, that one is... Um, it won't weld, but what you can do, and this is going to be not uh, an ideal. Let me go ahead and do uh, W size new document. This is not going to be the answer you're looking for, I promise. But um, if we take this model here and we duplicate it and we geometry 
delete higher, delete lower. Let me go through here and control W. We can just slice through here. Um, so for example, if we go to, I'm going to grab one of my curve brushes. It's a little bit more controller, controllery. Uh, it's a simple one. Um, um, there you go. So again, we're going to turn turn X off. If you have X turned on and you do this, it's going to overlap them. Um, so turn X off when you do something like this. And now you're just going to get one. You should. Um, but yeah, these things aren't going to weld on either side. So you would probably have to manually go in and do that. Um, I said that was a good one, but boy, that is a terrible one. Uh, let's go back to curve tube. And uh, so we have this one here. Um, and if we want to change the resolution of this, you can always go down here to the modifiers, brush modifier set at 20, which means it goes 20 spans around the curve. If we want to drop that down to like eight, that'll update to kind of simplify this cube out a little bit or this, this thing out. You could also simplify it down to, for example, um, you could bring it down to four and tap it. And now it's just a cube and you can also drop your Z intensity down and that makes it a strap. Incidentally, if you go to brush curve strap, that's exactly what it is. So anyway, um, we'll go ahead and crank that back up to eight here. And let's go ahead and you know what, let's. So we've got curve tube here. Let's go ahead and crank our Z intensity up back up to a hundred and we tap off and we do a split mass points. And where's our seam line in here? Wait a minute. Did I just lie? Did it just weld this perfectly? Well, how about that? Now, if this was a triplanar brush, it wouldn't weld perfectly. So, uh, and sometimes this one doesn't either. In, in the off chance that it doesn't, if it just overlaps here, what I would do is do something like wherever it's overlapping, say it's overlapping here, here, and here, just go ahead and grab those and delete hidden, delete the caps, and then just go back in here and do a bridge two holes. You can bridge here to here and just pull out, and then you could just dial in, you know. Again, it's not ideal, but you know, on a, and, and it doesn't matter what shape it is, you can always bridge two holes as long as they're the same shape. Uh, it should bridge fairly, uh, even if they're not the same shape, bridge works great. So you can go like here to like here, and then go like delete this, and now we can do bridge two holes. Um, so you can bridge to non, um, two things that aren't compatible. It'll, it'll resolve it. Um, but if they are compatible like this, it should do a pretty predictable job of bridging those two shapes together. So even if you had a complex shape here and here, you should be able to bridge between them uh, and go ahead and make that all the way through. Um, how do you store new items in the insert mesh brush? So if we have our brush here, any insert mesh brush, so brush insert uh, machine parts here. And let's say I want to add this one to it. You can go to B, create insert mesh append. It'll throw it at the end here. Uh, you can also go into your brush settings here, create, and you could do, you know what? I've changed my mind, I don't want that. I can delete that mesh. Or you can copy meshes, you can create insert meshes here. Um, you could edit your brush credit. In fact, now that I say all this, go to my channel, go to the ZBrush 4R8 What's New playlist, and all of that stuff, all the new stuff is in there. 61 videos. Uh, do you use the backtrack and stroke? Not really. Um, usually just shift does that for me if I need something really specific maybe, but I haven't used that in a while. Um, mention this technique when doing stylized fur, switching between different fur patches. Uh, you can just alt tap is probably what I'd end up doing. Yeah, Houdini's pretty awesome. I ain't gonna lie. Good morning, Dynamesh. Um, is it possible to tell the brush to act only on one polygroup? Yeah, uh, Salty's got a brush auto masking polygroups. If you want to see it live, brush. Auto masking, mask by polygroups up to 100, and now no matter what, 
if we go through here, no matter what that first polygroup you click on, if you start sculpting, it's going to stop right at that polygroup. It's kind of a cool look. And this is, uh, it is a slider and it is global. So this mask by polygroup works for every brush. Uh, these brushes, these things down here are not global. So you got to turn it on and off for individual brushes here. <laughs> That's a good point. Okay. Um, any advice for creating real-time hair in games? Yes, Geo to Maya hair. And um, I think I, you know what? I also had on my Pixelogic channel here. Let's see, we'll go to Stream Pavlovich Workshop. On the Pixelogic channel, you go down to video number six. Here, I'll link it to you guys. And that has a ton of hair stuff. And that has like hair strips and stuff you can do. A lot of different hair techniques useful hidden brush from the light box that you use that would probably be under brush that's a good question there's a lot of really cool stuff in here especially when you get the creature stuff um, i like to use brush miscellaneous where's my m there's a spherical so when i'm doing this kind of stuff i like to just go through here and like uh, this is a really good one it's even for hard surface you can just do spherical kind of brushes. This comes in handy. Then you can go through here and you can use your clip. I think so. I like using spherical. As an industrial designer, would you recommend ZBrush? If so, what tools would you point me towards? Um, insert mesh brushes are nice. You can set up a library of kit bash pieces. So you can do a lot of industrial design quickly and put together things really quickly. Uh, Z modeler, I would definitely check out. And Z remesh is good. There's a lot of there's I mean, and also if you're doing industrial design, um, you can go back and forth between ZBrush and uh, something like Fusion 360. So in my playlist here, if you go to the Fusion 360 Quick Start, and you go down here under working with multiple uh, working with imported objects, we go back through. We go through and we go back and forth from Fusion 360 to uh, ZBrush. So you can concept out your stuff in ZBrush and then rebuild it in Fusion. Go to that, that playlist there. Uh, which one of your videos now am I going to find one for basic polygon editing tools like bridging holes? Go to the intro to ZBrush part three and that will walk you through uh, all the Z modeler videos. There's like a bunch of them, like eight or so. Cool. All righty. My wife's got the music cranked. I'm going to head out. Thanks, everybody. We we're a little bit all over the place today, but hopefully you got your questions answered. Uh, happy Thanksgiving, and... I will see y'all next time. Um, I think, ooh, my December schedule is busted. So I think, ooh, I think next Tuesday, I'm not going to be here uh, for Pixelogic's live stream. And then next Thursday, I think I will be. And then almost all of December, I'm not going to be live streaming on Pixelogic. I think I'm going to be on the 5th. I'll be able to. And then my live stream is going to be spotty. Um, I'm going to see if, does Twitch have a... You know what? Uh, that's a good point. So on YouTube here, I do have a community section. So on my YouTube community section, I'm going to be posting my schedule. And then also on Twitch, I'll go ahead and post my schedule just because I know I'm, I'm not as consistent as I should be. But you know how it, how it goes. Anyway, thanks, everybody. Uh, catch y'all next week-ish. And see you later.